Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I have another exciting episode of Quilting with Grace on Tuesdays. Thank you again for joining me on a hot, hot summer day here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy week to um, watch, and, and I'm hoping that you're learning things as we're moving along. I've had lots of wonderful feedback and ideas for our future episodes. So, you know, if you want me to see me do something specific, please email me and we'll see what we can do to fit it in. Now, I'm not promising that yours will be next week or the week after, but we'll really try to fit them in as we move along through our series of quilting. Um, so remember the email, it's Carla with the K, K-A-R-L-A at graceframe.com. And it's um, really important for me to understand what you want to learn um, because I know what I want to learn and I'm trying to learn something new all the time. So let's jump in and like we, I hope you understand that this week I am quilting borders and corners without using the gold feature. I have to tell you, it's a little different. really love the gold features, but I wanted to show you that you can do it and you don't have to have the gold card features, but after seeing me do this and the steps you have to go through, you'll probably want them. So let's jump in and I wanna point out a few little things before I get started. So let me look at the board. Um, if you have any questions as we're moving along, one of the guys here, I have three guys here helping me out, so it's awesome. And so anyway, they'll stop me and let's answer some of your questions as we move through this. Okay, as I was setting up this frame, because we were changing from one set to another today, um, and we're, I was hurried, hurrying to get this all done, um, I noticed a few things on this frame and I wanted to reiterate some important things before you start quilting. Always, always, always wipe down the wheels on your machine and your frame. Wipe down the tracks because it builds up with lint and dust. Use water. Don't use any chemicals whatsoever. The chemicals make it nice and sticky. And so the lint as it's flying around will land and stick actually to your tracks. And if you don't wipe down your tracks and your wheels, the lint that builds up on them, and if you haven't cleaned them, want you to go look at the wheels on your frame <laughs> and your machine and notice them. If it has a little black ring, it's like ring around the collar, it's ring around the wheel. Okay, let's clean that off and it'll sew so much nicer. So make sure you're wiping it down and cleaning your tracks, um, really important. Make sure that if you've unpicked, that you're getting all those little dangling threads that are maybe on your table of your frame or the surface, get rid of them because we don't want it to hinder or impede our design as we're quilting. So just a couple of things. And then as you're putting your quilt on, I really like the leaders. So if you have a hoop frame, um, and I know some of the frames come with the leaders, others don't, but I also know that this month, um, the Christmas in July, is 20% off on accessories. So now is a great time for you to stock up on those wanted accessories that you might need. It might be an extra bobbin case, it might be extra thread, it might be a ruler base, some ruler feet. Oh, God, now's a good time. Quilt clips, the different two different sizes, because you don't know how bulky your quilt will be. So now is a great time. And for our international customers, in Canada, call Sew Right Distributors because it's across the board. So our sale extends to you, but it'll be in Canadian dollars. So I just want you to contact them and, and <clears throat> get your pricing correct um, so that you can purchase all those needed and wanted accessories that you've been waiting to purchase. So now's a great time. And I know we have some other great sales going on as well, so please look at our website. It's graceframesingular.com. So if you'll go to that, you'll see everything that we're running on our specials. And again, it extends to our international customers as well through our distributors in those countries. And 
So thank you, international customers. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you on the road coming up in the next few years. Uh, I love the international shows. So let's jump in, and let's get started. So you notice that I, I'm working on our Cunique 21 today, and I have tacked down my quilt, and I am ready to quilt my borders and corners. So I'm just going to open up my automation by double tapping, and it's linked. And if you double tap too many times, you're opening up over on top of each other. So make sure it's just once, okay? And I noticed that we had done this in simulation mode um, before, so I know I don't want to continue in simulation mode, so I'm just going to tap on no. And this is a good sign that it's connected. This will show up, and it says make sure your sewing, sewing machine needle is up. So just double check, because you don't want it in the down position and start moving, and just say okay. And you can hear it engage. Good signs that we're connected and ready to quilt. If you don't hear it engage, man, something's going on. So yeah, you have to go and check. Check your cords, Check, make sure that everything's plugged in okay, that you actually have it turned on. Yeah, I've done them all, so. It may sound really redundant and stupid, but, you know, <laughs> if it is stupid and it is dumb, I've done it. So, anyway, let's jump in, and because we're not using the gold features, we're going to bypass those. So, the first section I'm going to go to is my select and sew. And what I want to do is to draw, using my uh, marking tool, around my top border so that I can make sure my placement and my sizing is correct. Use the marking tool. Uh, it is one of the best features and a really good friend in using the automation that you'll ever run across. So, let's jump into Select and Sew. And now we want to place our safe area. So, again, don't place it too narrow. Don't just move up here to the corner of your quilt because it might not be on t really straight and then you'll be in, in the red and run out of your safe area. So make sure that you're up and off your quilt and then you're tapping on this section of the screen right here where it says top left as the arrow. If you will tap on this section, not up here, in this section, you will be placing your safe area. Okay. So now I want to move across my quilt. Notice how I was up and off as I placed my safe area wider, but I wasn't off my quilt all the way. That's why you make your backing and your batting wider and longer. Now I'm going to move across my quilt, and I'm going to pull it down and do the same thing. I'm pulling it up and off the edge of my quilt and moving it towards me, and now I am setting the depth. So... I'm going to tap on that same area on that screen where it said bottom right. And now it brings me to um, my read pattern screen. So this is the library of all your patterns. So we want to use a continuous line pattern. And we're going to move over across our library over into border sets, where it says border sets. There aren't a lot in here, and this is one of the tablets <laughs> that we use when I teach a class. So you'll see my name and um, other quilters' names in here. Okay, just ignore those. We're going to use the Curly Q. should be Carly Q. So anyway, we can rename it later. So we're going to use the Curly Q corner, and we're going to tap on that. And once the blue box has surrounded it, that means I've selected it. Now we want to open it. And once the blue box is there, I want to move across down to the bottom right of my screen, and I'll we'll tap on Open. And it brings you to your pattern placement screen. Now, you have a lot of choices with the pattern placement, but we are going to use one-point corner placement. So if you don't know where to go to f change your placements, it's right here. So this section right here is all your placements. So you can move up and down through the placements. You're good. That's two points. We were on one point. Now this is two point placement. Not going to work. 
we've got block, we've got hexaflor points, tilted, triangle, on point, cube, and then we just want to move back up. Okay, so we want to and notice how on this one point, it's not on point, it's one point, we want it has different placements where this little gray dot, it's called the placement node, will move. Um, so at the start point, this is where this design will start. Sewing. And then you have end point. The end point right here is where it's going to stop sewing. Then you have center. This is the center placement. So if you had a design that um, uh, you're, you wanted to quilt on a circle, um, this would be a really good one, or a hexagon or octagon. This one point center placement is awesome to use for those patterns and designs. And then we want to choose corner for our first one. So now that I've chosen that, I want to move up and you can find the, the marking tool in a couple different places on this screen. You can find it in the plugins and you can also find it in the toolbox. So if I move off to the left, you'll see a little red toolbox. The toolbox is awesome with the automation because it opens up all these great little valuable tools that allow you to use and, and it helps your quilting become that much better and more precise. So we want to move down to the marking tool. And with the marking tool, it's going to open up your marking tool um, screen. So now I can move around the edges of my border and make a border design on my screen. And that's what the marking tool does. So then it allows me, once I have that, then I can place and size my design correctly. So I'm going to move off to the left side of this border, and we're just going to do the top border first, okay? Just like we did um, when we were doing borders and corners. I'm moving off to the left, okay? And I'm just going to pull it down just a little bit because I'm not going to be able to quilt all the way down. It's only going to quilt so much. So I'm going to move to the lower left edge of my out, outside of my border, and I'm going to tap on this little add button. Okay, this add plus button, and notice that I have a little brown dot that appeared. Okay, that's the beginning of my marking tool, and I want to move up right here to the edge, and then I want to move across. And I'm just marking the edges of the outer edge of my quilt, and then I want to come down along the right edge, the right outer edge, and then I just want to go across. And now I'm going to do the inner border, and I'm going to come across, and I'm just using my needle as my guide. Now I went up past, but this is my border right here, so I just want to go to this corner here, and I want to move across to the inside left corner, and then back down. And then you can close it off if you have to, if you like open. Eh, don't worry about it. Okay. So notice that on this top edge right here, I came in a little bit for um, my seam allowance, so a quarter inch. I like to mark using my ruler. And I've done the top border. I'm just going to use, um, use it to do the sides. And I'm just going to come in, and I love my true cut ruler because if I was really close to the edge, I could use the little holes and mark all the way across. So, yeah, great, great tools we're coming up with. So if you don't have one of these rulers, uh, get one. You'll love it for marking. I use mine all the time. I have... I actually had my husband cut different sizes. So now I'm just going to go and do this left side here. I'm not going to do it too dark, but this will be in your binding. Okay. Notice I, I kind of got off there just a little bit, but that's what's nice about the pencil. You can just erase and fix. Okay. So now I have my markings right here. Okay. So. Now I know my edges and how far out I can quilt. All right, so 
Now I'm going to place my pattern, all right? It, we're not going to quilt it yet, so don't worry. I haven't sized it. But I just want to see how small I need to make it. And by placing it right here in this corner right here, so I'll move my machine to my upper left corner and notice I'm, I'm not going all the way to this edge. I'm coming in to where I marked my line. So I want to move it right here and notice, oh, it's going to fit pretty good because this is a little wider border than it can sew. And I can get out of my marking tool area. So I just want to, to get back into my placement. So you're going to come over here to your toolbox and you're going to move back up to your placements, and now we're in my placement screen. Well, because I maybe want it a little larger, not a little smaller. I'm not used to this, having to make it a little larger. I'm used to having to make it a little smaller. But because of the size of my border and my machine, I can make it larger. And I'm just going to, and notice how my little gray dot I mean, it was green because I placed it, it turned gray. Once you start sizing it, you'll lose your placement, so you have to remember to replace it one more time. And you'll have to keep doing this just to make sure that you're getting it sized correctly. So we can go a little bigger. This is kind of fun. I haven't had to size a larger design. Now, now I'm going to bring it in a little more and replace it and see if that, that's pretty close. Now, because of the way the design is made, it's a little wonky, okay? But I feel like maybe I want, to, and I want to make sure that I have my margins right there. So notice that this is going to come out just a little bit. But you know what? I'm going to be okay with that because I don't want to rotate or anything. So I'm going to call it good, and when it comes there, I'm just going to kind of pull it, okay? So now I have sized it, and I want you to write down this size in case something happens. So it's 11.035 and 11.036. Notice how the design is different, a little bit different sizing from the height versus the width. And you can tell right here in this little box right here. So yes, this is to make it smaller, the move in, and this is the move out to size it. Okay, so let's quilt this. So I'm going to kind of go into my quilt screen because I want to pull my threads as well. So another little tip is in your toolbox on your quilting interface screen, you have all these nifty little tools. If you will tap on move to start point, it's going to move to where this is going to start. All right. Okay, it undid, but now I can do my single stitch and I can pull my threads up, which I want to do. Okay. And now I'm ready to sew. So make sure you pull your threads up. In your toolbox and up here on the screen is a little um, single stitch icon. Let me just show you in the toolbox. Right here is the same thing. So you have one up on top here and one here in your toolbox. So if you forget where one or the other is, you have two places now. So now I'm ready to sew. And I'm just going to tap on sew. And so to let it do its thing, stand back and see, it, it, by enlarging it, it's made it bigger. It's kind of fun. And see how it came up out? I'm not worried about it. I'm showing you the process, and you can be um, as perfect as you want to be using this method. 
Any questions? <laughs> okay, Judy is asking, when you are placing your dots, can you use the needle to see um, needle placement a little better? Yes, you can adjust the needle down and with the Cunique 19 and the 21 Pro and our 15 Pro, you have a little needle jog where you can jog it down or you can turn the hand wheel. Just make sure that you meet, do your single stitch. So, thank you, Brenda. Brenda says, I like the way Carla is teaching the automation. Thank you. <laughs> Working on it. Lots of room for improvement. But see how cute my little spiral design is? So, I'm just going to, now that we're finished, I'm going to pull my threads. I'm going to make my tail underneath. Remember, you're grabbing, you're holding on to this tail right here. And you're going to go into your little toolbox. You're going to do your single stitch again. And then you're going to hold on to it and push it away to pull up that bottom thread. And you're ready to go to the next side and quilt the next corner. Okay, we're going to kind of do this a little different than I would actually quilt it. Um, but I just want to show you the method, okay? And you they can take all these little teaching things that I've taught you and you make it your way. You decide how you want to quilt it. Um, I'm just allowing you permission to try new things and different ways of quilting. You don't know if you're going to like it unless you do try it. All right, so now we're finished. We can tap on finish and it's going to take us back to our placement screen. Now, because I have already sized it to the size that I want, all I'm going to do is rotate it. And by rotating it, um, it's just going to angle it correctly so that this corner is facing um, this corner. So I'm just going to tap on my 45 degree two times. One, two. See how it turned it? It's the magic of the software. So now, okay, Brenda, can I do this on the 15 and the Cuzone? Um, yes, you can absolutely do the same method <laughs> on the hoop frames and, and using the 15. I'm just using the easiest frame. If you saw it around here, this was the easiest frame to get to and the easiest machine, okay? <laughs> it's a little crazy around here right now. So I just, uh, the path of least resistance is what I chose. So that's why, so know that the automation, it works with the hoop frames and you will love it. it so don't let that stop you um, from getting the automation because it's so intuitive that it's going to tell you where to move. Now, on this, this method, I am telling it where to move because I'm placing the design. But when you're quilting an edge to edge design with the hoop frame, which is going to be a future video, I promise. We'll do another one, um, and we'll have a lot of fun doing it. So I'm going to move over here to my right side. I'm going to move my machine up to my corner, and it should be the right size, so I should be able just to tap right here, and look how nice and perfect and sized that is. That's all I had to do. So now I can tap on quilt. All right, and then you can find your start point, move to start point. And it's going to start over here. All right, it released. That, that's okay, okay? Now I'm going to use this single stitch right here, and I'm going to pull up my threads. Okay, and after I've pulled up my threads, I'm going to tap on sew. It's going to engage. And I'm going to cut my threads and stand back and let it do its thing. There we go. And Karen... Uh, no, I am not using the gold features, this method. This is strictly by placement and using select and sew and pantograph. So I'll be using one point corner placement in my select and sew, my block design. And then I'll be using two point to set my middle 
section. So I'm not using the gold feature. And Brenda is asking, can you do a video on a small frame? Yes, I promise you we'll get some videos done. I'll, I'll do some on the cutie frame and the hoop frame. I've already done one um, with edge to edge design on the hoop frame. So if you can watch that one, that'll give you some tips and pointers. But we'll, I promise you, we're gonna get to that. And notice how it's sewed up and off. That's the way the quilt is on and without the gold features and, and you know, using the fabric comp and everything, it, that's how it's going to sew. So you have to just make allowances and understand and know. Um, and it really didn't look like it was, but that's how my quilt is on and knows how it just kind of comes in. So it's one of those learning things. So I'm just going to pull my threads and I'm just going to go into my toolbox, do my single stitch, pull my thread up and make sure I'm cutting. Okay. So now I'm going to do my center. And I have a feeling I'm only going to be able to do one <laughs> circle because of how big this is. But oh well, that's what we're going to try and do. So I'm going to tap on finish. And I'm going to get out of this screen. So I'm done with select, um, select and sew right now. And I'm going to go back to my home screen. And by tapping on the red X right here at the top left, it'll take you back to your home screen. I want to move to my pantograph screen. Now, I'm in the pantograph screen and I want to be able to um, size my design correctly, but I also want to measure it. And I'm not quite sure. I, I know it was 11.035, but that was for the corner design. We're just going to use one single design for our center. So, what you'll do is you'll tap on your ruler right here. At the top of the screen, there are some extra little tools. And you'll see you know, it starts out with home from the left, moving to the right. And the ruler is kind of in the center here at the top. And if you'll tap on the ruler right there, it's going to take you to your ruler screen. The ruler in the pantograph screen is awesome. Ugh. Another valuable tool that you will learn to use and love. All right. And all of these tips are in the help files that I've written, even this method. Okay. So make sure that you check those out. All right. So I want to measure how tall this is. So I'm going to move to the very tip top of where my design sewed. Okay. I don't want to come down on the curve. I want to move to the very tip top of where the design is actually sewed. So then I want to tap right here in this area right here. I want to tap on the left side. And notice that it's right there, corner. And then I want to move down to the very bottom, the very lowest point that the design sewed. And I'm going to tap on the right side. Okay, notice how it's bunched up. That's not giving me my depth. And I need my depth. So we're going to see this angled ruler right here. I'm going to tap on that and see how it moved down. So this is the size of my pattern. It's 4.477. I'm going to write that down. 4.477. I'm going to type with right depth. All right. And now I want to measure the distance between where it stops sewing on my left side and it starts sewing on my right side. So I have another measurement I want. So I'm going to move it over to where it stops sewing on my left side and align my needle. And yes, you can adjust your needle down if it's easy, if you want to. Uh, yeah, make that a rule of thumb that you will do that because your needle will give you more of an exact placement. So I'm going to, again, move my needle over that, over to that point where it stops sewing on the left side and tap on the left side of my ruler right here in the center. And then I'm going to move over to the right where it started sewing on the right side. And now I have my distance, okay? It's going to be a little interesting. 
Now you're going to learn to love borders and corners right now. <laughs> All right, because it sizes everything for you. And we've got 6.338, and that is the length. This is the width. We'll just use QCT terminology. All right, so now that I've written those down, I'm ready to get back to my placement screen or my design screen. And so I can just tap on my X out of here and get out of this. And now I'm ready to put my measurements in because I've done my due diligence and I've measured the height of my design and the distance that I want it to sew. So for your total width, that's the limit the, from one point to the other, that is going to be my 6.338. That's kind of the length, okay? So we're going to put 6.338. Three, three, eight. And if you tap inside this window, let me show you it again. If you tap on this little icon that says total width right here, it's going to open up the little, um, little range limit screen so that you could put in your um, range. So what I'm going to do is put the 6.338. And then I'm going to tap on OK. So now I have that. So now I want to do my depth or, or the height of my pattern. And the height, if you'll tap on the total height, it'll open up the same thing. And the height of my pattern is 4.477. Tap on OK. So now I have the width and the height. And now I can put my design in. So I want my design to be a total of 4.477, and it's only 6 inches wide. So we're going to have to do a little fudging here or just use one design, and it's going to be a little bigger. That's the nature of the beast when you're using and uh, not using um, borders and corners. And, of course, it will be wider as well. So the wider the quilt, the more designs that you can put in. But anyway, let's go and select our pattern. And you're going to come over here. Yes, I want to be in basic mode. Um, I don't want to be in power pants mode. So change your mode if you're in um, <clears throat> power pants. So if you want to be in basic or easy. I don't care which one. Um, and then let's go. Let's just try easy and see what it looks like. So for easy, I'm going to go in and select my pattern. And I want to choose this curly Q. GPF and open it up and it's only allowing me to do one design which is fine and that's what I'm going to quilt okay and it's going to keep it that size and the width it's going to kind of have to stretch so when I choose it so let's just use easy for this and now right here we have all these little options I'm ready to quilt my one design <laughs> in the center here and so I'm going to not sew in zones because I'm not sewing several rows down and several rows across. I want to place as a single pattern. So I'm going to come right here and place as a single pattern. Well, I was in one point placement, okay? And so I want to use two point placement. So I want to have a start and a stop, okay? And now it's sized correctly or it should be. And I want to now place my design. Now, I want to choose two points, but you see how you have start point, end point, and stretch. I want it to stretch. So I'm going to move over here to my left side and place my left side. And then I'm going to move over here to my right side and place my right. See how it stretched it just a little bit? And now I'm ready to go. We'll see how it turns. I know I'm talking your ear off today, but anyway, I'm just going to move over here because I know where it's not supposed to start sewing, and I can just go into my toolbox, do my single stitch, right here, pull my threads up, okay, and now I'm ready to sew. And hopefully I got it close enough. Yeah, it's pretty close. See? where it started 
it's kind of one big design. <laughs> but it looks pretty good. Oh, look how it ended. Okay. I'm going to end this this week because next week I'm going to show you the bottom part, okay? And I'm really excited to show you the bottom and the sides. So we'll continue on next week where I have more tips and tricks to show you and help you out. Let me answer a few questions, though. Vicki Edwards asks, I have a 15R and a Q-Zone Queen frame. I have my quilt basket, oh, my quilt basted, but I am so lost with the program, need a lot of video time. Okay, got you covered. We're working on it, Vicki. Um, and also in the meantime, let's um, get you the help files if you don't already have them. I don't know how long you've had it, um, but that's a good place to start. And I've already emailed several customers my version of the help files. So I'm hoping that those will really help you through the process step by step. Um, and with your quilt being basted and everything, you're ready to go. Um, so let's get you going and let's get you quilting. And if you need to email me specific questions, please do. Again, it's Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A at graceframe.com. I want to hear from you. I want to help you out. Um, and so just let me know. And I will see you next week where we're going to sew the bottom portion of it. It's kind of fun not as tricky as you think so join me next time and stay cool please take care we'll see you bye bye